My name is Stephanie Rogers and I'm the Executive and Artistic Director of the Anderson Center at Tower View. And today I'm happy to be talking with Art Kenyon, who is joining us from his studio here at the Anderson Center. Art is a painter, a drawer, and a printmaker. And Art, could you get us started by talking a little bit about yourself as an artist and your process in those three mediums? Okay, thanks, Stephanie. Uh, welcome to my studio. This is um, where I hang out. In fact, uh, during this um, virus situation, I've, I've been able to come here and work uh, and get quite a bit of work done. So it's, it's worked out favorably for me. This morning, I'd like to just go through the three basic uh, mediums that I uh, like to do, uh, drawing, painting, and printmaking. Uh, to start with on um, drawing, uh, most of my drawings, uh, really all of uh, my drawings, with pencil are, are very realistic and uh, mostly uh, portraits. And what I use is a group of seven or nine pencils. Uh, I, I really like the, the Duroet uh, pencil because it lays down uh, really nice on, on the board. Uh, on the, the boards that I do use are Strathmore, which are uh, really uh, a high quality a board. It's a cold press, so the surface of, of, of the board is slightly pebbled and it really takes the, the graphite very nicely. So uh, that's really uh, how I, I work out my uh, pencil portraits. But the other thing I use a lot is uh, it's an eraser pencil. Which you can see if, if, if you take a, a knife, you can sharpen the point which means you can go in and, and really do some nice work in terms of pulling out the highlights. If you've got a highlight in the eye, you can actually uh, really go in and pull that out on hair, using hair or even around uh, the, the, uh, the face. So uh, this is also a, a useful tool. I've never seen an eraser pencil before. And I think a lot of people who aren't as familiar with drawing don't know that it we would say in art school terms that it's subtractive as well as additive, that the things you take out and the, the values that you erase are important to the process too. Yeah, it, really it, exactly. Point. And you have to plan that out ahead of time in terms of the amount of graphite that you lay down. Uh, if you know you're going to have highlights in a certain area, you lighten that up so you can pull it up. The other thing I, I don't use as a stomp or any kind of, um, smudging tool to blend. I really don't like that because it drives the graphite into the board and you really can't control it. So what I do is, is actually, that's why I use nine different pencils. Uh, I start like with a 10 H is so hard. It's almost like a piece of steel. So when you lay down a line, you can just barely see it. So when you see the gradations in a face going from, from the shadows to the highlights, it's almost like painting, uh, with a, with a pencil, like there's no smudging and, and it takes longer to do that, uh, but I like the final result much better. So that's pretty much um, how I do that. Uh, I, I, subject wise <clears throat> on uh, drawings, I do a lot of uh, kids, um, some animals, uh, adults uh, as well. I, I have a series down at at the library <clears throat> where we've taken all the, the past uh, library, uh, head librarians and, and done portraits of them. Uh, so that's a nice thing to have uh, in a public place as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. The, the children's library in, in my hometown library still holds a special place in my heart. So I yeah. love that you can honor the librarians that way. So art just, does drawing form the basis for your painting practice? Do you draw things out first before you paint them or, or how, how does your process work in painting? Well, that's a good question. I, I personally think that uh, developing it, I think drawing is the basis of all good art. Uh, it, without a, a pretty well-developed um, drawing skills, whether you're a sculptor or a painter um, or whatever art form you work with, uh, it generally is going to fall apart later on in composition wise if you don't have some drawing skills. So uh, it does carry over uh, very well. And um, in fact, in the process that, that I do, I've got a series that I put together uh, where I show 
where he, uh, initially you draw the, the face. It's a it's a big draw, a big painting of a face. Uh, sometimes I will grid that in order to transfer it to to the uh, canvas. Then I draw it with pencil, and then as I start, I'll take a smaller brush with a wash and draw, redraw the face with a brush. The, the next phase is to go into a value painting where I take, use just grays and, or neutrals and um, pull out the highlights and work with the shadows so you have a value. It's really an important part of developing a final painting because if you don't get the values right uh, compositionally, then uh, you can have some beautiful detail in your work, but it's not, it's not, <laughs> not going to hold together. So after you do the value uh, painting, then you move on and fill in with color. I love that statement that if you don't get the values right, then the painting's not going to work. That word has multiple, the word value has multiple mm. meanings. And, and here in an art context, it means the lightness or darkness right. of the, the color, the shade. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly in other parts of our life, we can say that if we don't get the values right, that other things aren't going to work out very well. well. Uh, it carries through for sure. Yeah, this way it's, it, we have a graphic image. So, um, and, I, and I really enjoy doing it. Uh, another thing that's a little bit different for me, I don't know if I can show what this will show, but uh, it's the way I set up my palette. Um, you've seen in, in an art store how many different color paints there are. I basically use five. Uh, I was taught that way uh, early on. Uh, and so I, as you go around the palette, uh, you have a cadmium red and then a cad yellow, uh, then a cerulean blue and an ultramarine blue, and of course, uh, your white. And sometimes I pull a yellow, yellow ochre in here, depending on what, what I'm painting. But uh, the way I was trained, uh, I had a really strict, this was, uh, actually, this, this was in junior high yet, and um, I had a an art teacher who said, if you're going to paint, you're going to have to learn how to mix colors. So that's why he leaves this palette very, very sparse. And um, when you get into darks, uh, he, he said you would not, a good artist never puts black on their palette. You have to learn how to mix that because there's warm blacks and, and cool blacks, all kinds of shades in between. So um, that, that's kind of a, I talked to other painters that, that's something that's a little bit different, uh, kind of limiting myself. To, now, sometimes I'll add another. I just finished a project on uh, flowers. Uh, I don't know if you can see that in the back. There's a little uh, working with some electrical posts downtown. Uh, there I brought in some violets and, and some uh, oranges and so forth, which I don't normally put on the palette. But uh, again, um, your subject matter dictates what you're going to do there. Absolutely. And these are oil paints? Yeah, uh, I've done, I've done, I've worked in watercolor and I've worked in acrylics, but um, uh, oil, I just love oil paints. Uh, what I've, and, and the medium that I use is walnut oil. Uh, you, there's all kinds of mediums you can use out there. Um, I, I just love uh, walnut oil because it's a, the viscosity is exactly where, what I like. You, you can load up a brush with paint with a little walnut oil and it just spreads across the canvas it's just beautifully. It's just like butter, it goes right across. And I like more of an ethereal um, sort of uh, presentation, not so hard line. So this walnut oil along with, with my oil paints really allows a nice blended line uh, in there. As far as the, uh, this isn't really a commercial, but uh, it does, your tools do make a difference. And I like M. Graham as, as far as the, the brand uh, for the paint. And, and I, I just think uh, after trying different brands of oil paint, uh, this is a little bit juicier than the others. It, you, it, you can really work it really nicely. So it, it, everyone has their own uh, preference, but uh, that, that's the one that I like. So Part of everyone's development as an artist is figuring out the tools and, um, and the medium 
that work for them. And I can tell that you've put a lot of effort into experimenting with different things and finding the ones that yeah. work just perfectly for your style of painting and what you're trying to express as an artist. I, I like to draw, paint, and print make because um, I, I, um, I don't like doing the same thing all the time. And this allows me uh, to, to move around and, as you said, experiment and try different things. Uh, there's a great deal to be learned uh, taking what you learn in drawing and painting and printmaking and bringing them together. Each one has its own distinct um, appearance and goals and, and techniques, but there's a lot you can learn from one that you can transfer to the other. A lot of times I'm working either on a, a drawing or a print, printmaking, a print project, uh, and, I, and I find I learn something that I can apply to my painting. So uh, for me, uh, it's really energizing to, to work all three. Tell me about your printmaking process. How is it different from drawing and painting? Well, uh, printmaking really is, is an animal all of its own. Um, I, I caught the bug uh, when I went to the university and studied under um, Malcolm Myers, who was, he's gone now, but he was uh, just an, an excellent uh, printmaker and well-known and renowned up there. Uh, I, I, so I got the bug when uh, he was a good teacher. Uh, the thing I like about printmaking is that uh, there's so much that's up in the air. Uh, when you draw, you can see right in front of you as it moves. As you paint, you can see a direct correlation. I mean, it's immediate gratification kind of thing. With printmaking, um, you, you really have to study it out and plan it out ahead of time. And then you work the plate or you work the block. But you never really know. This is a <laughs> really exciting part of it is you never really know what you have until it comes through the press and there's always things um, that do not go as planned. Um, I, I, I like to say that you know printmaking is kind of like life you, you really plan out and you try and do your best and uh, the only thing you know for sure is that not everything's going to go your way so when, when that print first print comes off the the press what you really have to do is um, really study it and, and make adjustments uh, and, and calculate how you're going to take something that did not turn out exactly you want into something that you really do. So um, making those adjustments and, and um, uh, following it through, uh, it, it, it's really a, uh, it's really an interesting process because it's, some of it's chemistry, some of it's art, and um, trying to reach that final goal is, it's very labor intensive because you're cutting or you're etching, um, you've got uh, different tools, really sharp, there's really a safety issue, um, and you've got acids and, and copper plates and so forth. So um, you really have a lot going on it, in printmaking. What's great about being here at the Anderson Center, and Stephanie, the, one of the best things we've ever done is to put this printmaking uh, shop over here. I, it used to be in my studio here, if I wanted to do a printmaking project, I'd have to close down everything else. I couldn't draw a paint because it would take up the whole studio. <clears throat> and you have your, your clean part and, you, and your dirty part with the inks and so Having a separate uh, studio to go to over here, we, we have the presses, uh, we have the tools, we have the space, uh, we have the drying racks of the, <clears throat> the whole, the whole process is there. One of the problems that printmaking, people who study printmaking, and I've known some really good people who come out of school, but they drop the art because they don't have the equipment, they don't have the space. Uh, and, and, and they just, I mean, how many people can afford, you know, a roller press, uh, all of, and, and the inks and so forth. So here we have a, a great studio and it's open, I, I guess, really, if, if people want to come in and, and uh, rent space there, is that correct? Yeah, we would rent it out to by the day um, for people who don't have any background in printmaking, there would need to be some training that went on, but if people mm -hmm. have studied printmaking in school and, and can demonstrate they know what they're doing, we do rent sure. that out by the day. Yeah, that's a great advantage. Uh, 
I, I don't think there's another active print studio in, in, in the whole area. So um, this is great. I can be over there working on a printmaking project. Then I, I have my drawing table right here in front of me. And then I have an easel over here to paint. So I could have three different projects going on at the same time. And I really, that's very engaging for me. That's the way I like to work. You've talked a little bit, clearly you've had some formal training in the arts. You, you talked about your junior high school art teacher yeah. and then also that you took art classes at the university. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't your yeah. main, it wasn't your main career, I know, or it was only a part of, is there a point where you felt like you had made it as an artist or reached a level of success that you were going for? No, no, no. I, I don't think any, I, I don't, well, there are exceptions, but I don't think very many artists think that they've made it. That, um, the one thing that I really enjoy about the processes that I work with uh, is that you literally learn something new every day. Um, and you're making hundreds of this, you know, little tiny decisions along the way. But um, no matter how many paintings you do, you learn something from it. Well, any art, art that you do, you learn, and a lot of that's transferable into other things that you do. So, um, no, not, not made it. I just uh, try and uh, improve my craft uh, every time I, every day. Yeah. yeah, I can relate to some of that. Sometimes I think of the work that I do as solving different but similar problems over and over again that every art project I take on is a new problem solving exercise yeah. and I don't know how it's going to turn out when I start it but I know that I have the skills to see it through to the end. I think that's one of the things that one of the most important things I think people that artists or people who like art um, can grow from is that it is so changeable and interchangeable and things don't, like I said, it's like life, uh, you get thrown curves along the way and you have to work your way out of it. And um, to me, that, that's, some of, that's some of the challenge. And in fact, if, if something's going, every once in a while, the painting will come along, they'll just go together really fast, really quick. And, and um, to me, uh, this sounds strange, but it's somewhat of a disappointment because it, I think part of being very satisfied with a piece of art that you've done is the struggle along the way, trying to work out the, it's a, it's a problem solution scenario. And, and uh, that's why I say every print, new print you start, every new painting, every new drawing uh, has those challenges and you're going to learn something that you, you thought you had it all put together and <laughs> you get halfway through that project and you're learning things that you didn't know before and that makes it really exhilarating. That, that's why I do it. So what are you working on now or next? Uh, I'm doing quite a few things and that was one thing that I uh, was concerned about when I first opened up my studio here uh, at the Anderson Center. I was, because I'd been away from it for so long I was wondering uh, what would I do? Well, um, it didn't take long and, and you just, projects come along. For example, this, um, this large painting back here uh, is a commission for some, uh, some really nice folks up in Minneapolis. They, they had seen a, uh, uh, at the fall festival, a smaller rendition of a Poppy's painting I did. And this one's six feet long. So it's uh, quite an explosion off of the, the first one, but those kinds of opportunities come along. And then over behind here is a painting that I just finished for the uh, uh, for the artist poetry uh, project uh, through Red Wing Arts, and um, where, where you take a poem and you do a visual um, interpretation. I love doing that. I've been doing that for a few years now, and uh, that, that's another. Uh, way to re to really uh, increase your creative thought because you're taking something that's foreign to you up until that point and you need to convert uh, the written word in into a visual image and um, that's really challenging and it's a lot of fun. So in addition to being an artist who works in your studio, you're involved in a lot of different efforts here in the community of Red Wing. Could you tell people a little bit about some of the projects you've done and where they can see your work out in public? 
Yeah, uh, that's been really something that's been a, a great addition to um, to my studio work. Uh, several years ago, Peg Hansen's uh, uh, art class up at the at the uh, high school uh, was involved with uh, a mural project uh, they wanted me to do <clears throat> in the gymnasium. It was all a pretty flat gray wall in a gym is pretty big. So um, we we did a, 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 a really fun project. Took, uh, I think, six or eight weeks to do. Uh, we, again, we created a, I, I created a drawing of an eagle, which is their mascot. And then we gridded it off and then transferred it to the wall. The kids had never done anything like that before. And then they went, went through and painted each square and then it all came together. So it's, uh, it, was, it, was, it was really uh, great working with the kids to do that. And then at, at the up, that was on the big wall and then on the smaller wall at the end, uh, we did another mural with a, a eagle breaking through, uh, through some uh, bars. And the, the, just to watch, it's always a, a pleasure to me to watch someone do something that they didn't think they could do before. And all these kids really knew art, artistic uh, endeavors. They had skills, but they never applied it in that particular way before. So that was really, uh, really fun. And then I, I've done some murals at the uh, Southeast Tech um, when, the, when the Red Wing Arts had their veterans uh, project uh, a while back. It, we put a sculpture together down at Levy Park. Uh, where we we created a, two separate uh, steel plates and cut out uh, both a civilian uh, pair and a military pair. Uh, that that was uh, that was pretty special. It still is when I drive by that and and see that. Uh, I, I was in uh, I, I was in the service, so it means a lot to me to see something like that. You were in the service. What branch of the military did you serve in? Uh, out of college, I went in the Army and spent uh, three years there and then came out and got to work. Yeah. I think one of the most prominent places that your work is visible in Red Wing is on the welcome sign as people are coming in from the north on Highway 61. The, the city of Red Wing sign there has a painting of yours and that's a pretty new project. That was really gratifying uh, because, uh, as you know, the, the city is working closely with the Prairie Island group out there, uh, both on Barn Bluff and other, other uh, projects to really uh, support them. And that entrance sign out there had started to peel and it was uh, falling into disrepair. So rather than go back with the same black and white um, image, uh, they, they asked if uh, if we could do something that would uh, represent uh, Prairie Island and, and their heritage and their culture. So um, I went to the, uh, up to the history center and they had this small, really small uh, photograph, black and white photograph uh, taken uh, back when, when the Indian village was actually right at the foot of Barn Bluff. Uh, it, it was an actual, a photograph. So I, I took that and then did a drawing of it, exploded up into a drawing uh, using some artistic license because it was really fuzzy. And um, then got together with the uh, uh, some folks out at Perry Island and uh, put the, the painting together. They visited my studio several times just to make sure that everything was culturally accurate and um, that we weren't violating any, uh, any cultural uh, heritage things. And then, um, and then we gifted the original painting uh, to them out there and then had it transferred to vinyl and put on, on the uh, entrance sign. That, that was a, a lengthy project and, and uh, I, I was very satisfied with how it turned out. It looks beautiful and I just wanted to ask if there is advice that you would give to aspiring artists. 
That's a good question, and and I I think the way to answer that is it depends on uh, what you want to do, uh, because I really encourage people to get involved in the arts. Uh, so many people come into my studio and say, "Boy, I I used to paint, I used to draw, I used to do this, I used to do that," and I say, "Well, how's it going?" So well, they say, "Well, I, I don't do it anymore." And so I really try and encourage them to stay in the arts and. You don't have, one of the misnomers, you don't have to create a masterpiece every time you sit down to, to make a picture. You, you just don't. Uh, if you are serious and you really want to progress, then I say you have to look in the mirror and, and admit to yourself this is going to be a lot of work, okay? Because it's like anything else that, that you uh, succeed in. Uh, nothing happens by happenstance. You have to read uh, a lot. You have to uh, learn different techniques, and then you have to practice every day. Um, I just, uh, again, it depends on what direction you want to go and what you want to accomplish. But um, there's a lot of good information out there, but, but the information is only as good as you interpret it and how, how you lay it down in, in whatever medium you want, want to pursue. Um, but, uh, Either way, either way, the journey can be a lot of fun. So uh, again, it's, it's what you want to accomplish. We've talked about where people can see your work out in the community. Are there places online? Uh, ArtKenyonFineArts.com. Um, and I, <clears throat> I, I, I don't keep that up quite as well as I should, but uh, I've got my, my materials out there. Um, and also, uh, right now I'm at Mandy's and at uh, Sheldon. Um, had had two great shows uh, where no <laughs> nobody <laughs> showed up because of the coronavirus. But um, and then I, I'm down at the, uh, the depot, Red Wing Arts, and out here, of course. You've been kind enough to um, okay some of my material here. And then a lot of what I do right now is commission work. So um, there's a lot of private collections at, uh, around uh, well, wherever. I've, I've got a, a nice uh, patron out in Texas and up, uh, through the cities and that sort of thing. So um, and then, of course, I'm, I'm out here. Uh, Almost, I'll tell you what, if I'm in town and I don't have something big going, I'm, down, I'm out here every day. So I do have a uh, display space out here with my paintings and drawings and so forth. So that's available. And anyone who wants to drop in, I, I invite them to be here because it, it's a nice place to be. I, I enjoy people coming out and seeing my work. Wonderful. Well, we love having you as part of the artistic community at the Anderson Center. It's been a lot of fun learning more about your process and your development as an artist and how you think about it. So thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me today, Art. Well, thank you, Stephanie. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Again, my name is Stephanie Rogers. I'm the director of the Anderson Center and the studio visit interviews have been a project of the artistic response team of Red Wing. A collaboration between the Anderson Center, Art Reach, Red Wing Arts, Sheldon Theater, and Universal Music Center. Thanks.